What is up guys, it's The Real Deal, back with another Ray Channel video and today we are going to be looking at top 10 epic arena nukers. So when I was making this list, I actually forgot how strong some of these epic nukers are. There's some real hidden gems in there that can definitely help carry you in live arena. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out who they are. Um, so how do I rate champions? The way I like to do it is from Classic, 3v3 and Live Arena, but I am definitely more biased towards champions that will help carry you in Live Arena, just because it's new content and it's where I have the most fun in the game. I also want to ask if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe because it helps my channel grow, but it also motivates me to make more content for you guys. Um, so let's get on with the list. Please let me know if there's anyone that I've missed out because Polarium are just churning out champions out at the moment. And, you know, some might just slip underneath the radar that I miss out on. So please do let me know in the comments below. Coming in at number 10 is Sagala. Um, she's an old school champion. She's more early to mid game. She's definitely not as strong as some of the other nukers further down the list. But if you do have her, she's definitely worth using sort of mid to early game. Um, she will fall off late game but she does have a very nice A3, attacks all enemies three times, and after the first hit, has a pretty good chance of putting out the big version of decreased defense on all enemies for two turns. Um, if she gets um, another go with her A2, attacks one enemy, if it kills the target, it'll basically instantly reactivate her A3. So basically her A3 will just go again and absolutely slam the team. Not a bad champion, but not the best. Coming in at number nine is Sinatia. I used to use her all the time she is such a great champion it's all about her a1 it is a uh, always aoe hits and also places an extra hit on enemies with less than 50 percent hp after the first hit but she she hits really hard if their hp drops below 50 percent, it comes and hits again and honestly it does hit insanely hard and you know all you need to do is just use her a1 and you'll definitely drop the enemy team she also has an a3 that's really nice that basically um, whoever's got the highest HP, it'll heal the rest of the squad back up to their HP. And yeah, great, great champion. And obviously, if you pair up with a sister Skull Crown, you can make a really nice blender comp as well. Coming in at number eight is Sand Slash Survivor. Uh, another Rook. I bet people were quite surprised by this choice. So she doesn't hit super, super hard, but she does hit pretty hard. But the reason she's on this list is because she has great utility. Um, she's got a really nice passive that um, basically if one of your allies um, HP drops below 50%, she puts a block damage buff on herself and then puts ally protection on the rest of the team for two turns. This is a great ability, um, but also her A2 does hit surprisingly hard. Um, attacks on enemies decreases the duration of all buffs by one turn and then increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn as well. That is a great ability and it does absolutely slam. Got a nice A1 as well. Attacked an enemy two times and has a pretty good chance of landing Provoke as well. Um, yeah, just so good. Such a good champion. Really underrated. Coming in at number seven is Gala Longbraids. I mean, all of her abilities are pretty sick, to be honest. A3, attacks one enemy uh, three times. Each hit will ignore 25% of the target's defense grants an extra turn if this champion has full HP after using this skill. So I think it's really nice to pair up with someone that's a bolster set. That way you have a much better chance of keeping her HP fully topped up. Um, and the chance of her getting to go again, I mean, you could just literally just spam her A3 and just plow through the enemy team. Um, also, she has an A2 that will ignore 50% of the target's defense when attacking under a shield buff. So I think that's another reason why it's good to pair up with, someone with a bolster set on. Um, heals this champion with uh, champion by 50% of the damage inflicted. Places shield buff on this champion equal to any surplus heal by three turns. So good, so good. A1 attacks one enemy two times. Each hit will ignore 30% of the target's defense. And again, places shield buff on the champion for two turns. The value of the shield is equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. She is a really good champion. Definitely worth investing in. 
Coming in at number six is Magna, and he is an absolute beast. Um, so he's got an A2 that's almost on the same level of Trunder damage. Um, so attacks all enemies and will place an extra hit if the enemies do not have HP burn on them. Um, ignore the stun because you don't want to build him with accuracy. You want to be doing damage. I mean, it is nice that you can land a stun if you put a bit of accuracy on him, but it's unlikely you're going to do that. You want to open with your A2 and drop heads. Um, real good counter to like Candrophon or any sort of full snookers. So definitely worth someone having up your sleeve. Um, he's got a nice A3 as well, but this is more for if you want to spread debuffs and use HP burn. Um, and his A1 hits pretty hard as well and has a pretty good chance of landing decreased defense as well. But yeah, great, great champion. Another one definitely worth investing in for the arena. Coming in at number five is Dark Elhane. I mean, she is a great champion, another hard hit nuka, like all these nukas are. Uh, but what really makes her stand out is that she's a great counter to Tormund or any other freeze champions. Um, so her passive will fill this champion's turn meter by 25% and instantly activates her A2 um, whenever this champion or an ally receives a freeze debuff. Um, so what happens with her passive as well, um, instantly removes any freeze debuffs on this champion and replaces them with increased crit rate, increased crit damage, and a strength and um, buff. And then she'll go into A2, which also increases her attack for two turns, and then ignore the decreased defense because you are just going to be building her with attack. Um, but yeah, attack boots, you don't need to uh, speed boots for her, and she's just going to be doing so much damage to the enemy team. Um, and then her A1 is also really hard hitting. She is just a great, great champion. Coming in at number four, it is Shamao. So everyone knows how strong this guy is for Hydra. I mean, I've got three built specifically for Hydra, but he is also great for Arena, and he can be used at plat level play. Um, so what really makes him strong is his A2. It attacks one enemy three times. Um, we'll ignore 25% of the target's defense. We'll ignore a further 25% of the target's defense for each buff he has. So all you need to do is put him in stone skin. So that gives him great protection. And that's one buff. So he's got 50% ignore right there. Bring in even just Arbiter. She puts on increase, uh, increase attack. That is another buff. That is 75% ignore defense. That is insane. So he doesn't need to be put in Savage. You can build him however you want. You can just build him very differently, which is something that I really like about him. Uh, and the other thing that really makes him sound like he's a great counter to Taris. So Taris has a passive that throws out fear every um, round and uh, Shamul can counter this. Um, each critical hit will fill this champion's turn meter by 7.5%. So you don't need to put speed on Shamal. You can just focus attack percentage. So attack percentage banner, sorry, attack banner with attack percentage, attack chest and attack boots. You do not need to worry about speed. Uh, whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff from an enemy, this skill will instantly remove that buff and fill the ally's turn meter by 15%. That is huge. Um, and then his A1 is pretty average, to be honest, um, but you, I would say put Helm Smash on him so his A1 can still do damage. I would have bumped him up further on the list, but because he's a single target um, champion, that is the reason he's coming in at number four. Coming in at number three is Skullcrown, the original Liores. Um, so she is such a great champion. The reason she's coming in at number three is because she's got two AoE abilities on her A2 and A1. So A2 attacks all enemies and has a 50% chance of placing weakened debuff for two turns. This hits really hard, but it also has an A1, attacks all enemies and places an extra hit if the target has more than 50% HP. Um, you can do so many creative things with her. So like... You can make a blender comp, which is basically a really fast team with an ally attack champion that makes Skull Crown and Senatia, her sister, both pop off with their A1s and they usually will just shred through entire teams. I like to do something that's called, I like to call it reverse blender. So you bring in a Valkyrie and then Valkyrie will put on counter attack and then Skull Crown will just keep popping off every time she's touched. Uh, she also has a passive that places unkillable buff on this champion for one turn if her HP drops below 20%, really nice ability. And if you do have both the sisters, she does have a nice passive 
that revives her afterwards um, if she does die and gives her 30% HP, which is also really nice. But yeah, great, great champion. Um, definitely could be used in live arena and do some funky things with her. You can definitely build her different ways as well. So you can put her in retaliation set, um, obviously savage, but there's a whole bunch of different ways you can build her. Um, I've I've seen people build her in lifesteal as well that can be really annoying as well. But yeah, really like her, really universal champion. Coming in at number two is Gembo. And this guy can compete with the big boys. He's almost a legendary. Um, but yeah, he's got an A2 that just absolutely slams. Mine's in swift parry. And without drop defense, he's still pumping out like 100k hits. Um, but yeah, just hits so hard. Um, then he's got an A3 that can increase crit rate and crit damage by 30%. And then grants an extra turn. So you do your A3 and then you do your A2. Um, I wouldn't rely on this though. I would build him with 100% crit rate rather than going for 70. The main reason for that is if someone puts like true fear on you, you're not going to um, open with your A3. You're just going to try it and get lucky with the A2. Or if someone puts uh, block buffs on you, then you're not going to be able to increase your crit rate, which is going to cause issues. If you don't crit, your damage will drop significantly. So don't do it. Go for 100%. Um, he's also got an A1 that hits pretty hard and it can steal um, a random buff from the enemy. Um, I've even seen it steal stone skin, which is pretty funny. And then it comes onto you and then you've got stone skin. But the main reason he's number, th number two is because of his passive. Ign um, immune to decreased de attack. That's pretty nice, to be honest. Um, if you have decreased attack on you, it means you don't do, it does drop your damage by quite a lot, but it's more about the ignore unkillable buffs if he's under increased attack buff. So if you bring an Arbiter, she increases your attack. This means you could take people out like Leores, Skullcrown, two of the best champions in the game. It is just so strong and it is such a good ability. At number one, it's Fanax. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by this. But this guy is a real hidden gem, especially for Live Arena. He's one of the strongest. He can even go against legendaries for Live Arena. And the reason he's so strong is because of his A1. So attacks one enemy. You need to make sure you bring in a debuffer with him, though. Places an extra hit if any of the um, if the target is under any debuffs. And it has a block revive. So he is one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game. And if he kills someone, they're not getting back up. They're dead. They will stay down. So what's so good about this? Well, in a live arena, the chances are the enemy team are only going to have one nuker. And if you kill them, that's it. They're staying down. And he's a great counter for force nukers as well. And there are so many force nukers at the moment. They are so meta right now. So he counters them heavily. And like I said, if he kills them, they're staying down. Um, and that's all it is. It's just his A1. So you just need to make sure that you bring in someone that's going to throw out debuffs and then someone that's going to revive for you because you need to keep him alive. But if he gets through, you know, you take out their nuka. It doesn't matter if he dies, you revive him and then you can just pick off the team one by one. But and if he gets the kill, they're staying down. And it, seriously, he hits for like 60k per hit and it's a double hitter. That's 120k. No one's surviving that. Uh, the other thing that's nice about him is A2 does hit really hard as well and it attacks enemies. It is an AoE hit, but it's just his A1 and it makes him an absolute god for Live Arena. I mean, he's still really good for Classic Arena and 3v3, um, but Live Arena where is where he'll really, really shine. I mean, you wouldn't use him for Plat Reset because he's just going to be quite slow because he's single target. But Live Arena, he's going to carry you so hard. So I just want to do like a quick re uh, recap over all the champions we've looked at. So there was no bomb champions on this list. I really wanted to include Soul Drinker, but he's just so awkward to use. And the other thing is so easy to, you know, the cleanse. There's so many cleanse champions. There's so many champions that block debuffs. So it's really hard to bring in a bomb champion. And bombs as well, like I said, they can be cleansed, so they're not guaranteed. But they are really good for taking out stone skin. But the chances are they are going to have a cleanser or something that blocks debuffs. 
and you're not going to be able to get your bombs out. So unfortunately, you know, it's not about, and Poison and HV Burn champions, they're not going to do anything for you either. It's all about hard hitting champions and any champion that's got some sort of survivability or mechanic that they can just pop off and keep going again. That's who you want. But yeah, please let me know who I've missed off the list. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe for more weekly content. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.